You know, trigonometry might be the worst named math subject in all of K through 12 math. It's not that bad at first because teachers typically introduce it using right triangles. So we'll say things like, all right, if this angle down here is theta, why are we using Greek letters all of a sudden? Who knows, but whatever. If this angle is theta, then we're supposed to use something called Sokatoa. And Sokatoa is a way to remember these special ratios within the right triangle. That is, if I'm trying to take the sine of that particular angle theta, it's equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse of the right triangle. It's a ratio of the different side lengths within this right triangle. Cosine, of course, is adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent would be opposite over adjacent. That's what the whole Sokotoa thing is supposed to remind us of. Okay, so far so good. So if we're looking at something like our three, four, five right triangle, these different trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, tangent, don't know why they have funny names. They're just different ratios of these side lengths. Sine would be the opposite side three divided by the hypotenuse of five. Cosine here would be four fifths. That is the adjacent side to that angle divided by the same hypotenuse of five. And tangent would be opposite over adjacent, three over four. So you start out feeling pretty good, that's not so bad, right? And then you get a problem like this. Sine theta equals root three over two, tangent theta is less than zero, what is cosine theta? Tangent theta is less than zero? If we're just looking at lengths in a right triangle, lengths are not supposed to be negative. How are we supposed to deal with that piece of information? Even worse, teacher starts talking about what's sine of 90 degrees? What's cosine of three pi over two? Pi? How did pi get involved here? Trigonometry is ill-named because although we do introduce it with right triangles, it's really not that much about trigons, triangles, it's really about circles. And that's how things like pi get involved. And there's one particular circle that we use a lot when we're doing trigonometry. Teachers typically ask us to memorize it. It's called the unit circle. And this video is my little announcement video. I have created a tool that I really hope lots of people use. I know that I'm going to use it with my own students and as I tutor students. You can find it at, the link is gonna be up here. I'm pretty sure it's desmos.com. It is on Desmos, but the link is going to be bit.ly slash interactive unit circle. All lowercase, no capital letters. That does matter. If for some reason that's not the actual link, I don't know, I'm gonna have to come back and re-record this part of the video, or better yet, I will just put the actual link in the description. But if you wanna play around with this interactive unit circle, please check that out, bit.ly slash interactive unit circle. Here are the things it can do for you. It can switch between different displays. That is, it's going to display the value of certain cosine theta, sine theta, tangent thetas. It can switch between degrees and radians. And I wanna show you how it can help us build some intuition about what's going going on in trigonometry with an example problem using this particular interactive unit circle. One of the things that the unit circle is best at is reminding us that it would really be better to call trigonometry circleometry. Again, although it's true that we typically introduce trigonometry with something like right triangle ratios, in the long run, that's not what we want to understand sine, cosine, and the other trigonometric functions to represent. Part of the purpose of the unit circle is to situate these functions and these angles in the coordinate plane and help us better understand what fundamentally they are. Starting with a better way to think about sine and cosine than just some weird mnemonic device. The value of the cosine of an angle is just another way to talk about the x coordinate along the edge of this unit circle. The value of the sine of an angle is really just a different way to talk about the y coordinate along the edge of this circle. This is why sometimes when you're looking at a unit circle, you'll be looking at just a bunch of ordered pairs. Those ordered pairs represent a pair, cosine theta comma sine theta, that corresponds to the actual cosine and sine values for any given angle. Angle. So, for example, something like pi over 6. That's in radians, by the way. If you wanted to convert it to degrees, we would just click this little toggle and we can see pi over 6 radians is the same thing as 30 degrees. If we want to know the cosine of 30 degrees, literally it's just the x-coordinate for that point when we're looking at a 30-degree angle 
in the unit circle. When we look at the point that is 30 degrees from the positive x-axis, always making sure to count counterclockwise. This is what tells us that the cosine of 30 degrees is the same thing as root three over two. Although we could also get here with special right triangles, the circle is basically doing that part for us. Similarly, if I wanted to compute the sine of 30 degrees, I would simply look at the y coordinate for that same point. And that's what tells me that the sine of 30 degrees is one half. Because we're in the coordinate plane, we now have an understanding of why the trigonometric functions can sometimes take on negative values. If I'm looking, for example, at cosine, which again is the x coordinate, and I'm looking at any of the angles in quadrants one and two, that cosine value is going to be positive because all the x values to the right of the origin are positive. But if I'm looking at the cosine of any of the angles on the left side of the coordinate plane in quadrants two or three, those values are going to be negative. Similarly, when I switch to sine, sine is the y values, and so everywhere above the origin, quadrants one and two, sine is going to be positive, while everywhere below the origin, sine is going to be negative. Tangent is a special case because tangent is defined as the ratio sine to cosine. So everywhere both sine and cosine share the same sign, tangent will be positive. That happens in quadrant one, where both sine and cosine are positive, but it also happens in quadrant three, Three, where both sine and cosine are negative. On the other hand, in quadrants two and four, sine and cosine have opposite signs, and so the ratio tangent is going to be negative. There are various mnemonics that teachers also use for this. The one that I'm most familiar with is all students take calculus. And so this reminds us that all the trigonometric functions are positive in quadrant one. Sine is the only one of those three that's positive in quadrant two. Tangent is the only one of those three that's positive in quadrant three. And then cosine, I don't even know if you can see that behind me. Cosine is the only one that's positive in quadrant four. So back to this problem we started the video with. How do we use something like this interactive unit circle to figure out the value of cosine theta given basically two clues. Sine theta is root three over two and tangent theta is less than zero. Using something like this unit circle, the first thing I would do is I would ask myself, okay, sine theta, which again are the y coordinates, is supposed to be equal to root three over two. Where does it happen that my y coordinates are root three over two. There are actually only two places that can possibly happen. Either we're looking at pi over three radians, that would be equivalent to 60 degrees, or we're looking at two pi over three radians. That's equivalent to 120 degrees. But the other clue we were given is that tangent is supposed to be negative. Remember, tangent is only going to be negative where sine and cosine have opposite signs. That's quadrant two and it's quadrant four. That means that we cannot be in quadrant one, so we must be looking at quadrant two. Finally, if we know we're in quadrant two and we're interested in cosine theta, we want the x coordinate of this same point. And so that tells us that when sine theta is root three over two and tangent theta is negative, cosine theta must be negative one half. So there you go, a quick little introduction to trigonometry, to the unit circle, and most of all, I hope, an introduction to this interactive tool that I would love for lots and lots of people to use. If you are a teacher, share this with your students. Play around with it yourself, make it your own, introduce it in class. If you're a student, again, check out bit.ly slash interactive unit circle, play around with it, figure out what's going on. It is useful to situate certain special triangles in here, and there is a special super secret mode that is hidden in these folders down here where you can see some of those special right triangles and figure out how these values are generated, hopefully for yourself. That's it for me today. Happy angle chasing. I will see y'all next time.